Welcome to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking apart, at least partly, the new Up Air One Plus. So, what I want to do is kind of document um, some of the connections here because this is the one big question I still to this day get even about my old up airs is geez I've, I've wrecked it or I've been in a crash can you you know send me a picture of where the wires and cables should be because I don't know so before I did any of those things I wanted to kind of take this apart a little bit especially this bottom half and sort of document the pieces and take a little bit deeper look at it so in case I do crash or you crash um, there's a reference here how this goes together and I want to talk about a couple of the pieces because I found this is quite a bit different than the original up air so uh, one of the first things I want to I want to kind of talk about is the gimbal itself so the gimbal itself in camera the camera looks pretty much the same as the original version but the gimbal is substantially different uh, no longer is the OSD part of the gimbal assembly it's now over here now I'll talk about this in a minute I want to come back to this so it looks like in here there's simply a, just a storm 32 board uh, running a you know two um, brushless motors uh, for the gimbal so obviously there's no yaw ability so only pitch and roll uh, are uh, available in this design now this is actually a very good thing and I'll get to that in a minute but before I do I just want to point out uh, a couple different things in the connectors so you have a connector hidden inside here this looks to be a USB uh, connector it appears to be a DF13 configuration uh, but it is four pins and if you go back to one of the early episodes I did on the original up air uh, the controller board, uh, the APM controller board, had a connector very similar to this, which we developed a USB connector for to connect to Mission Planner. Now, I believe we can do the same thing here, and I may do a, a updated episode where I, I connect um, a standard USB-A connector to this and try uh, setting it up with the Storm32 software. So this is actually an interesting and intriguing piece. Now, I am going to modify... Um, the housing for this because the housing for this doesn't allow um, any entry so I'm going to cut a hole in the housing so I can get to this without disassembling this whole piece and, and be able to work on this. The other piece and, and I'll talk about this more in a moment in, in greater detail but in the original up air you really couldn't um, remove the gimbal because the OSD was part of it and so for everything really to work and for you to have OSD abilities now you could fly it without the OSD but you, you got no telemetry with this you could still I believe and I haven't fully fleshed this out but so far the way it's looking still get telemetry without this gimbal and camera now you will need a camera and that's a little bit and I'll talk about that again a little bit more in a minute so because what it appears is that again now this only has two connectors where the original one had three so this is this has for your gimbal power and logic from the receiver to control the tilt of the camera uh, but that's about it this one appears to be for the video and power to the camera itself now the camera still appears to have integrated electronics for the gimbal in other words I believe there's gyros inside the camera uh, here that actually feed back to the storm controller up here and so uh, you know this is still required for assembly but I, I'm almost thinking it is highly possible you could put a real gimbal on it now this gimbal is is uh, uh, far less than what was on the original one this one is basically all plastic the original one was some sort of alloy metal alloy metal I'll spit that out this one is is all plastic so this one is definitely going to break very easy now keep in mind I'm not criticizing this because this is a $300 quad you know this is not a $500 quad this is not a thousand dollar quad you get what you pay for so you know any any haters out there eh, go ahead and hate uh, but it is what it is and so the, you know I have a you know Phantom 3 I've got tons of quads and I think each of them fill a different uh, void in a price point 300 bucks you're going to get a plastic gimbal. Now, what I like about this, and the reason I'm going through this, is, is I'm having a little bit of heartburn of lately with DJI. Now, I, I really love their products, no question, some of the best in the market. Uh, but, I, you know, they're becoming a little bit too overlordish, because, uh, and I don't mean this to be a rant, it's simply a quick explanation. So I've got the Spark, 
and with the latest update I typically fly in a classy airspace but the classy airspace doesn't start until 700 feet well DJI knows that I'm in a class E and it's now starting to restrict my height and distance to like a hundred feet which is just ridiculous because the regulations say I can go up to the full 400 feet there's still 300 feet between myself and 700 feet and and my outward distance should not be limited there's no regulation that limits that except how far I can see it and so this is where I'm starting to become a little bit frustrated with DJI I still love the spark I still love the phantom but I'm just afraid that this is going to get worse and worse now I, I think there are probably some ways I can disable this but the thing is they're just applying more and more control so this is where I'm looking for other platforms that have similar abilities that you know I can take and I can modify to have the freedom to fly with inside the regulations I want and, and this is one of the options I'm looking at so all right ramble over so anyways this pretty much covers out this whole piece now I'm gonna do probably a little bit more another video on balancing the camera out and that's why I'll talk about what's inside the camera and explore that a little bit more in that video I just don't want to get too long now let's hop over to this guy one of the things that I spoke about in uh, the video when I did the unboxing I'm gonna change the focus here the camera so uh, so if it bounced a little bit that was why so here's these this really large controller unit and uh, you know I mentioned it's got this large alloy heat sink and that's actually what this is because this is actually a thermal piece of uh, conductive adhesive which is actually sticky and sticks to the bottom side of this so you have to really make sure if you take this apart that this readheres so you'll burn up your video transmitter it has obviously two SMA uh, clips on here for antennas on each side which feed back through underneath into the copter then back obviously out these legs as you see here now underneath here is the is the new OSD which used to be a daughter board inside the gimbal over here so it's no longer the case and here we have two connectors now you can see this connector loops back and is right here and and what we have here is if we look at this we have a ground we have a hot a white which is usually audio and then a yellow which is usually video so this kind of indicates that this is powering the camera and taking the video signal from the camera now the way OSTs typically work is they use the horizontal scan generated by the camera to do what's called an overlay and this is how you get the data now I, I'm not sure if that's actually what is doing in this case because again we don't have as in the original one where it's an overlay any longer we have telemetry transmission so I'm gonna do some more experimentations and I'll come back with some other videos to, to you share you know will this work without the camera because here's what I'm thinking is you can get a real gimbal you can go buy a Zen gimbal etc and rewire this fairly easy to work with basically any gimbal or camera you want and still use it now again I still have to flesh this out but the way the electronics is looking at first plush is that this is an opportunity and if this is an opportunity this is really a cool opportunity now this other connector which is uh, I didn't count the number of pins here but uh, basically is only comprised of four wire two black two red is uh, I, I'm assuming that this is going to be power and then also signal uh, from the radio to control the gimbal so the angle of the camera these four wires so I'm not sure I'm gonna test in, in a later video I'll do some tests offline then I'll cover it maybe in a later video when I do some mods but I, I'm, I'm assuming that there are probably two ground lines one is a signal ground and one is a power ground and that's the reason for the two grounds and then this one is probably power while this one is probably signal from the radio for the gimbal uh, tilt and so very straightforward and again all that comes into here because you can kind of see we have the uh, coming into this connector here I believe is the telemetry from the uh, PX4 controller so it's taking in the telemetry here it's taken in the video here this is the video transmitter because this is um, you know, maybe you can see there's two boards here so this is a daughter board to the OSD I can't really quite see how it's connected um, it's not very clear I don't see any screws because there are some screw holes here bolt holes however you want to phrase it 
but I don't see any type of um, connection. It seems to be just connected by these four. And so I really can't see up underneath there, so I don't know if the two are soldered together. But the, they don't seem to lift out. So you'd have to do a little bit more exploring as to what's holding this all together. And I really don't want to get that far into it now, now that I know that this is like it is. Uh, however, if you do burn up this module, I, I do think you probably have to replace both modules. Um, unless there's some way to separate it. Now there might be, there kind of looks like there might be um, a black clip here now that I'm looking at it a little bit closer in the light. So we might actually be able to pry this up and I think actually we can. So I'm not going to pry that up now, but uh, I'm going to take it back. I don't believe the boards are soldered. So I believe there are just connectors in here. So anyways, I wanted to share this. So you get, you, get, you know, number one to create, uh, you know, a reference for myself. And then number two, reference for you guys out there. So if you crash it, you can come back to this video and see how it all comes together. Now, again, this one seems to be far cleaner um, in electrical design than the original Up Air was. And I like this a lot better because this is really a crappy gimbal. Now, again, you're paying 300 bucks, so, you know, for, again, you haters out there, you know, don't compare this to a P3. It's not a P3. You know, this is $200 cheaper, and, of course, you're going to get a cheaper gimbal and everything. The big thing is, I'm interested in this, as I've already rambled, how can I modify this to make it better than it was before? Um, because one of the things I want to do is be able to fly other cameras. I love the 360 degree cameras and I want to be able to fly it on here. And so I want to be able to do some mods to this to fly that camera. And so far this is looking uh, really good like I'm going to be able to do that. So look for some videos in that in the future. I've got a few other projects before I get there so it's not going to happen tomorrow. But I didn't want to share that. So anyways... Um, let me know what you guys are thinking for lunch. Hey, subscribe button's coming up over there. If you have questions, hit me up in the comment below about this. Or if you'd like to see maybe some other piece or uh, me to cover a specific part of this, uh, I probably will eventually pop the top case open and take a look at the PX4 controller as well as the main motherboard and ESCs and all that. I'm assuming outside of the PX4 controller, everything is probably pretty much the same. So, see you guys in the next video. Cheers.